Examples five and six um, will be repeating what we've already looked at in some previous examples. Um, so what I'm going to do is give you some quick results so that you could run through these examples on your own, verify those, and then make sure you would be able to compose the correct uh, written portion to your conclusions. So in this case, we're, using, we're looking at dependent samples because we've got data that's paired by the month in which it occurred. So we've got dependent samples. We would conclude that both samples come from normal populations. So since the conditions are met to test claims about means, we'd be running a paired t-test. And we would get a p-value for that test of 0 0.0014. So that should be enough for you to verify that you're able to work through that problem, but then make sure you can come to the final conclusion. And in example six, we again have paired data based off the year in which those data values occurred. We would conclude that both data sets come from normal populations. So we would again be running the paired t-test which would generate a p-value of 0 0.3499. So again, make sure you can work through those examples. If you have questions, be sure to contact me. But they're going to be similar to what we did in example 3 when we already looked at conducting that paired t-test. Instead, what we're going to do is spend a little more time focusing on examples 7 and 8 where we're going to look at using some of those non-parametric tests, so the Mann-Whitney and the Wilcoxon signed rank test. In example 7, we have information on the top grossing films from two different genres. Can we conclude that on average, top grossing adventure films and action films bring in the same amount of money? So in this case, we would start off by assessing normality. keeping in mind that only one of our data sets has to fail that condition um, before we can't estimate or test claims about means anymore. So in this case, we would assess normality and the Shapiro-Wilk test on the action movie data set would give us a p-value 0.003, which would be less than our value for alpha. So we would conclude that comes from a non-normally distributed population. So again, you want to make sure that you can complete those steps. But we're going to jump ahead and say, since the conditions are not met to test claims about means, and we have, in this case, independent samples, because even though each of our data sets has the same number of values, there's nothing that pairs our values in the left-hand data set, the adventure movie data set, and the right-hand data set. We could juggle around those names and values, and it wouldn't change the information. They're not paired by year, date. There's no special relationship between those values. So since we want to test, since we can't test claims about means, and we have independent samples, we'll use the Mann-Whitney test. to test the following hypotheses. And since I'm running out of room a little bit here, I'm just going to condense this. So our null hypothesis would be that our two population means are equal to each other. Or another way to say that would be that the two, I'm sorry, the population medians. So that the difference between those medians is equal to zero. The alternative then would be that the difference between those two population medians is something different than zero. So to run the Mann-Whitney test, we'll select stat, non-parametrics, and then Mann-Whitney. We'll select our first data set, second data set, and then in this case, not equal to is our default alternative statement. So we click compute and generate a p-value of 0 0.0147. So our p-value is 
0.0147, which in this case is less than alpha, which was set to 0 0.1. So we reject the null hypothesis, and or I'm sorry, we yeah we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that median 1 minus median 2 is not equal to 0. So in the context of that data, that means that the two population medians are different. So there is sufficient evidence to conclude that on average, the gross brought in by the movies in two, these two genres is different. So in this case, the claim is not supported. We can't support the claim that, on average, these two genres bring in the same amount. So again, in this case, using the Mann-Whitney test, because we can't test a claim about means, because we have one of our data sets coming from a non-normal distribution, and we have independent samples. In our last example, when wildfires break out, um, they're fought from the air and at ground level. Table below provides information on the number of firefighters killed on the ground and an aircraft by year. Can we conclude that on average, fewer firefighters are killed in the air than on the ground while fighting wildfires? So again, our first step that we're going to gloss over, but you'd want to be able to write that full um, process out, would be assessing normality. And in this case, when we look at the ground level, data set, we would get a p-value 0.0161, and we would conclude that's not normally distributed, or that comes from a non-normally distributed population. So in this case, our conditions are not met to test claims about means. And we have, in this case, dependent samples because we have data values that are paired by the year in which they occurred. So we'll be using the Wilcoxon signed rank test. To test the following hypotheses. So the null hypothesis that those two mean medians are equal to each other. And the alternative hypothesis that M1 is greater than M2, because we're saying that on average, more firefighters are killed on the ground than in the air. So to conduct the Wilcoxon signed rank test, we'll again go to non-parametric select Wilcoxon signed ranks. This is going to have two different options here. The first says one sample. We want to make sure we select paired so that so the one sample test only lets us select one data set. Paired lets us select two data sets. So we'll select var1 and var2. And our alternative statement that the difference between those medians is something greater than zero. Again, StatCrunch is writing that hypothesis just a little bit differently. But as long as our inequality symbol matches up, we'll be on the right track. We get a p-value of 0 0.0071. So in this case, that's less than our value for alpha, which equals 0 0.05. So we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that M1 minus M2 is greater than zero. So in the context of the data, that's saying that on average, more firefighters are killed at ground level. So there's sufficient evidence to conclude that on average, more firefighters are killed at the ground level than an aircraft. So in this case, the claim is supported. 
I stated that sort of, I guess, in the opposite way, but the original claim is saying, can we conclude that fewer firefighters are killed in the air? If we're concluding that more firefighters are killed on the ground, then yes. In this case, the data does support that conclusion.